Okay, folks, you got Mitchell here. Uh, I want to do a, a pretty interesting video right now. Uh, I'm going in tomorrow to have the TLC laser eye surgery, the LASIK eye surgery done. Uh, I've been wearing glasses for about five and a half years. And uh, for most people that wear glasses, you know it's a huge pain in the butt and there's really nothing that's enjoyable about it. You go in and out of the house, they fog up, uh, your, your kids are always touching them, you're always cleaning them. If you cook anything on the stove, they get splatters all over it. There's just nothing about glasses that I find enjoyable at all. So I've opted to go for the laser eye surgery. And, uh, you know, it's a big decision to make. And you, you want to have all the information that you can get before you go and do something like this. So I want to put some information out there. I went and did the prelim preliminary stuff. So you go in and they're going to take all kinds of measurements of your eyes. Uh, there's a pupil, pupil dilation that they do. Uh, you cannot drive home after they do that. And what it in turn does is they put, they freeze your eyes and then put drips in it first. And then it creates your pupils are going to go big. So the lights are all screwed up and you can't see close to your face. Uh, what this allows them to do is get a true reading of what your real prescription is. It also allows them to see in behind your eye. Uh, some of the other tests that they're doing, they're testing the thickness of your cornea because they're going to make a cut in the eye itself and flap it back and then they take a laser and they go in and cut. So they're going to test and make sure that you've got the right thickness. Uh, none of these tests are painful in any way, shape or form. I would attribute it more to uh, just like when you go to the eye doctor and he does his little test and stuff like that. It's the same stuff. A couple of them are kind of different where they turn off all the lights and you got to stick your head in this thing that looks like a universe. It's pretty wild, but uh, all in all, uh, it's been a pretty easy go. This is the TLC laser eye sucker that I'm going to. Uh, right here, what I've got is the informed consult for laser surgery. So basically, it's them telling you all the bad stuff that could potentially happen to you. Uh, I'm going to take you through this whole procedure step by step. So we're going in tomorrow morning at 8.20 a.m. Uh, you can eat food the night before, there's no issue. Uh, they're not going to put you to sleep for this procedure. They're going to give you some Ativans if you elect to have that. Ativans is just something that's going to allow you to calm down and, and relax. It will also help you sleep when you get home. Uh, the procedure itself, hour and a half in the building and out. Uh, the actual procedure itself is 10 to 15 minutes. This is the information that they've given me. Uh, it only takes about 22 seconds per eye for my prescription. So once they make the cut, they're going to zap it for 22 seconds and that'll be good. So it's a pretty in and out type of deal. You do have to come back the following day for a follow up to make sure everything's in a happy place. And then they give you a schedule for regular follow ups with your optometrist. And he's going to make sure that that flap heals properly and etc. Um, some of the things that they cover in this consent um, that can happen is halo. Halo is one of them, which would be uh, if you're driving at nighttime, uh, if you're driving at nighttime in the rain and you kind of see those like uh, halos or rainbows that are around the, the headlights, that would be the halo effect that they're discussing. Uh, it's a very small percentage. I think they said 6% uh, of all their patients have that as something that could happen. Um, there is no chance of going blind. This is the first thing they say to you. There is a 0% possibility of you going blind. Uh, it's a lifetime warranty, which I have at the back here, lifetime commitment. So they're going to fix your eyes, and then if you do go back in, and after you heal, say in 30 days, you feel that you can't see properly, they have a chart, and if you go do your eye test and you fall below their allotted number, they're going to take you right back in, they'll do the whole procedure again and correct it. Um, also, with the lifetime commitment, they're going to allow you to come back in 10 years. People say, well, what happens when my eyesight gets worse in 10 years' time? Because I'm only 33. So, I mean, when you turn 50, you could have some issues with reading, etc. Uh, it's lifetime, 100% lifetime. So in 15 years' time, if you feel like you can't see properly anymore, you walk back into this place, and they're going to hook you right up. Uh, cost. They have two different kinds of surgeries that you can elect to do. Uh, it's kind of like a, a silver and gold type of package. The silver package is the old school way. So they're using a knife. They're going to go in and actually cut it, flap it, you know, and then it takes twice as long for it to heal. That's the gold option. They're using a laser. Uh, you know, it's in, it's out, and it heals very quickly. 
Uh, the way I look at it is, uh, I mean, it's a $15 pair of Costco jeans or it's a $100 pair of Tommy Hilfiger jeans. When it comes to your eyes, I really think that you should be choosing the more expensive of the two options. Not only that, but option number one is a very dated, old option. So this is something they've been doing for 15, 20 plus years. Option two is the new technology. It's easier, and I like the idea of them not using an actual knife to cut the eye. So that's something to take into account. The cost is quite a bit different. Uh, for the whole procedure, it's going to be $4,500. My Blue Cross covers $500 of that, so $4,000. Uh, it's two thousand dollars an eye. They do have a payment plan, which I've a lot opted to do. So over a five-year period, I'm going to make eighty, hundred dollar a month payments, which isn't the end of the world. But uh, back to the consent form here. Like I said, the halos is one of the things that you can have an issue with. Um, if you had dry eyes to start with, there is a potential for you to have dry, drier eyes moving forth in the future, and you might have to have drops. I don't have any of those issues. So uh, it's not a problem for me. Uh, night glare, dry eyes we've covered, uh, over corrections, under corrections. Basically they're saying that they're going to do the best job that they can to correct your eyes to the proper prescription, but there's no guarantee. And then there's a lot of disclaimers in here about how they can't 100% guarantee that they're going to get it right the first time. Um, there's even a section in the back of this book where they want you to sign this is something that I think is a little bit sketchy, but they want you to sign and it says, I understand that there are risks and that there are no guarantees. They physically want me to print that in this box right here. And below that it says, I understand I may still need to wear glasses. They also want me to print that in there. So I get it. They're, they're covering themselves. I've had uh, three, three people that I know that have had this surgery done and they all swear by it. So either way, uh, you know, the, the dangers, uh, there's not a whole lot there. The woman actually that did my eye test from the office was going in to have the LASIK surgery done the day after. And I think that that says a lot about the procedure. If you work in the building and you elect to do it, that, you're there every day seeing the pros and cons of what's going on. If she's saying, hey, I'm going to go have this done and I work here, I think that says a lot. But uh, anyways... I just want to give some information on it. What we're going to do tomorrow is we're going to show some videos of us going in, hopefully. Um, we'll see what clips we can snap without them giving us a hard time. Uh, there is a screen there where you can actually watch the whole procedure being done. And I'm going to hopefully have my wife uh, videotape that if we can get the camera out without them noticing. And then we'll go through some steps of healing as... Uh, you know, it takes a little while for this to heal. Uh, they say four days you're going to stay inside and not go anywhere. You need to wear glasses indoors and outdoors the whole time for that four day period. And I think it's up to seven days. And at night time, there's going to be patches that you're going to put over your eyes and you're physically going to tape them on for the first four days or week. I'm not sure if it's four or seven days. But the purpose of that is so that you're not in there rubbing your eyes and potentially you know, opening up that flap or screwing with what they just did. Um, what else? There is also nighttime stuff. Uh, right now they've got me taking these wipes and I have to wipe out the, basically any crut that could be in your eyelashes. You just wipe it once in the morning, wipe it once at night. Pretty sander stuff. But anyways, uh, I'm going to take you guys on this journey with me. Um, if you have any concerns before you go do this procedure, I really hope that this is going to help you. So, uh, you know, we'll see you tomorrow morning and we'll see how it goes. Well, we've arrived. 8 a.m. in the morning and we're going in for the appointment. So let's go in and see if we can get it done. So come Tuesday morning, I can take a shower? You can take a shower, yeah. Okay. So Tuesday morning, like, really was it? Exactly. Oh, no, it's water. So much because it's done. Okay, it's okay, yeah. Keep in water. Okay. Right. Suction doing in. So these they tear apart, they open and reseal, there's about five drops in each. If you use it in Okay, the I'll call you in a minute. But <laughs> Thank you.
in your yeah. for example, if I call it it's not more since I never have to use to be to do if I do put that down, and something that I can download is fine. I can't put that down. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty sure that was the laser. Good thing his eyes is frozen. Okay, so we just came out. As you can see, they've given me the glasses that I have to wear all day, every day for four days. Uh, our appointment was at 8.20, and it's now 9.30. So that shows you how quick you are in and out. So just wanted to say that's the first step is for us getting out of here. So we're going to leave. Okay, so we just got back to the house. Uh, my eyes are sore, so I, I'm not, I won't lie. The procedure itself, um, real nice people, you know, really nice ladies, but the procedure itself is, is not something that I would want to do again. I mean... They put suction cups on your eyes, which have a lot of pressure to it, and they do their little cutting the flap thing, which is very uncomfortable because you know the whole time that's what they're doing is cutting the flap. 
when they move you open, plus they cut both flaps and then move you to the next machine. Once you get to the next machine, they put in this thing that's going to open and pinch back your eyes, which also has a lot of pressure. They're dripping everything in you one by one by one. And then the laser comes on and it's ba 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 It smells like burning. They're telling you it's okay. 20 more seconds, Mitchell. 10 more seconds, Mitchell. You know, the whole time I'm just holding my breath, like, get it done. You got to stare at this little orange light looking thing. But once she peels back your eye, your eyelid thing, you can't see the, the thing anymore. So it's, it's intense is a light way of saying it. I wouldn't say painful. I would just say uncomfortable. Uh, now we're back home. I've got my little kit. So they give you your little blue kit. Inside this comes your discs for your eyes. So while sleeping for the first five days, you have to tape these onto your eyes so that when you're sleeping, you're not in there rubbing and digging. Uh, my eyes are sore right now. These glasses, uh, all day, every day, for five days. I did bring in my chainsaw glasses. You know, they have a nice kind of look to them, and they told me, no, I have to wear theirs, so you're not bringing your own glasses. And then they have a bunch of prescription medication they've given me. Uh, it's just a whole bunch of anti-inflammatory drops and things to make sure your eyes don't go dry. Uh, every hour on the hour, you have to take these drops for, what was it, four days? Yeah. Yeah, for four days. So have a partner around to participate with this. But um, all in all, I'm happy with what we just did. Uh, as it's rolling out there, I, I feel some pain and pressure a little bit, but uh, we'll keep coming back. We are going to do the tape on eye things, and then I'm going to go lay down for a while, I think is where it's at. So okay. that's it for now. So here we go. So I've now got the protective shields up that they give you with the tape. I can't see what it looks like. My wife put it on, so I'm sure it looks half haggard. But uh, I'm going to go lay down for a couple hours now, but this is what they require you to wear and what is it, Janice? It's just for one day or for... for it's the four days, for I four think, for days, when you're sleeping. i got to wear this while I sleep so that you're not messing with your eyes. So we're just showing that, but uh, I'm going to go to bed now. Okay, good morning. This is day number two. Uh, we're getting ready to go to the follow-up appointment. So the day after you have your surgery, they call you back in first thing in the morning. And it's my understanding that one of the optometrists is going to check the flaps, etc., that they've made in your eyes. Uh, a couple things I want to cover is number one, these are the shields that they give you that you have to wear. You tape these over your eyes at nighttime so that you don't end up rubbing, etc. I, I don't think that uh, these are uncomfortable at all. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, let's talk about pain and irritation. The whole time I was coming towards this, people were saying, oh my god, my eyes stung for three and four days afterwards, and it actually gets you quite nervous. Uh, I usually don't have an issue too much with pain here and there. I handle things fairly decently, but I will say, I have a zero out of zero for pain going on. I have a zero out of zero for discomfort going on. Uh, I woke up once in the middle of the night and I had to get my wife to, to give me a set of drops just because they, my eyes felt dry, but as far as pain, discomfort, swelling, any of that stuff, zero, zero, zero. So that's, that's some pretty good information I'm sure people are looking for. So we're going to head out to this appointment and get her checked and hopefully she's in a happy place. Oh, and here's my eyes too if you want to see them. There's, there's nothing there. They're a little bit red, but there's nothing there that you can see that's, uh, that's gnarly. I gotta wear these stupid things for four days, inside and out, but anyways, I'll come back with more. Okay, just got back from the doctor's office. Uh, this is the day number one after the surgery. Uh, I went in and they gave me some more uh, eye drops. So he's telling me that, uh, he was saying that we were supposed to have drops once every hour as a minimum on day one. Now that it's day two and the eyes are actually healing, they want to see you doing three drops per hour as a minimum. Uh, the idea behind this is that if you keep the eyes moist and that healing procedure is going down, it's just going to continue going in a fast way. Uh, instantly, overnight, I have acquired 20-20 vision. So when I went in there, that was not the case at all. Uh, he tested me today. I read every single letter on the chart all the way down to his, the finest one that they could do just like that. He was very impressed, but it goes to show you the success of this surgery. He showed me the difference from what I was reading prior and there was like block letters like that that I couldn't see. And on the last chart that I read today, they were like a pinhole. So 
as of this moment right now, I would recommend this surgery to anybody and everybody, hands down. So we'll keep you informed there. But I, I'm, I'm telling you, I couldn't think of anything negative about this at this point in time. There was no drastic pain or anything of the sort that I had to go through. Discomfort, I would say zero, and results 100% in an extremely short period of time. So I'm very, very satisfied right now. All right, here we go. It's day number four. So today is the day that I get to take these glasses off and get rid of them. And I'm telling you what, I am friggin' happy. These things are all kind of cloudy. The concept behind them is that they'll stop you from focusing on stuff. Um, th this is the conclusion. It's the last video as, that's part of this thing here. So I just want to let you know that uh, if you were considering this surgery and you were wondering if it's for you or not for you, I would recommend it 100%. The people at the TLC uh, LASIK Center, hands down, super professional, very accommodating. I felt no pain whatsoever throughout this whole thing. I felt no irritation. I felt nothing of the sort. Not being able to watch television or read for four days sucked pretty good. Uh, I had audio books and stared at the wall, which wasn't awesome, but uh, anyway, I, I was tested, 2020 vision, I can see everything perfectly right now, I find that the lights are a little bit bright, so for the next week or so I'm supposed to wear uh, some glasses just to dim it down, and I do have a little bit of a, like a halo thing around the lights, which the doctor said over the next little while will go away, but hands down, I would recommend this 100%, I have no spots, there's no, I look tired here, but there's no spots, there's no damage, there's no anything on my eyes. I think it's the best decision I've ever made, and I would recommend it hands down. So, thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel.